Okay, so in this video, we will go over a simple definition and a few short results. Here's the first definition. A linear system is said to be homogeneous if the constant terms are all zeros. So here are three examples. If you notice the coefficients, the real numbers multiplying the variables can be anything you want, but the constant terms are all equal to zero. So all three linear systems are homogeneous. Now, here's a theorem. Now this is something we'll prove later on, but we can at least look at it from a heuristic point of view. If you go over all the examples we've looked at of linear systems, we always had either no solution, a unique solution, or an infinite number of solutions. And you may ask, is this just sheer luck, or is it always true? The answer is, it is always true. A linear system has either no solution, a unique solution, or an infinite number of solutions. Now we can think of this quite simply in terms of the type of variables. Now if you think of it, we know that as we will reduce a linear system, we may end up with a row of zero coefficients, but a non-constant term. This implies that zero is equal to something non-zero, which is not possible, which gives us an inconsistency, which means the system has no solution. Now if this does not happen, we will have solutions. The question is then, what? Well, either all the variables are leading, and so we have a unique solution, or at least one variable is free, but if you have a free variable, it becomes a parameter which can take on any real value of your choice, which therefore gives you an infinite number of solutions. And that's it. That is the heuristic argument for this theorem. You may ask now, what if we have a homogeneous linear system? Can we perhaps simplify this theorem? And the answer is yes. We can eliminate this possibility in the case of a homogeneous linear system. So there you have it. A homogeneous linear system has either a unique solution or an infinite number of solutions. Now let's see why a homogeneous system cannot have no solution. If you just look at this system, it shouldn't be too hard to see that if you set x to be equal to zero, and y to be equal to zero, that you have a solution. It shouldn't be too hard either to see that if you set here x to be equal to zero, y to be equal to zero, and z to be equal to zero, you also have a solution to this linear system. And it should be hard to see here if you set x equal to zero, y equal to zero, z equals to zero, and w equals to zero, this also is a solution to the linear system. And this obviously works for any homogeneous system. No matter what the coefficients are of the system, if you multiply them by zero, you get zero. And so setting all the variables to be equal to zero will always yield a solution to a homogeneous linear system. And that's why in such a case you can eliminate the possibility of having no solution. And so if you have a homogeneous linear system, you can only have a unique solution or an infinite number of solutions. Now because the solution of setting all the variables to be equal to zero always works for a homogeneous system, we give the solution a special name. Same thing for this one. It is called the trivial solution. trivial because it is trivial. It does not matter how and what the coefficients are, how many variables you have, how many equations you have. If you multiply anything by zero and you add that up, you add a bunch of zeros, the result is always zero. And so this is why we call it the trivial solution. One last remark. So we know that if you have a homogeneous system, you can only have a unique solution or an infinite number of solutions. Is there a shortcut to know if you are in case A or B? The answer is yes, but only for case B. The shortcut is the following. If you have a homogeneous system that has more variables than equations, then 
the system has an infinite number of solutions. Let's see why this makes sense. Let's go to the last example. We have two equations and four variables. Now think of the row reduction. You can only have in any given row at most one leading one. So this system would have at most two leading ones, but as there are four variables, they cannot all be leading. This guarantees the existence of a free variable, which proves that the system has an infinite number of solutions. And that's it, that's the reasoning. And the same reasoning works in all cases. If your system is homogeneous, it always has the trivial solution. But if you have more variables than you have equations, then because every row cannot contain more than one leading one, you have automatically more variables than you have leading ones. So you must have at least one free variable, which guarantees the existence of an infinite number of solutions as this free variable becomes a parameter. If you look at these two examples though, anything can happen. As you have two variables and two equations, you could have two leading ones, which would give you a unique solution, or less than two leading ones, which would give you an infinite number of solutions. The same thing goes here. There are three variables, but there are three equations. So you could have either a unique solution or an infinite number of solutions. So here the shortcut does not work, and here either. To figure this out, you would have to actually row reduce the linear system. But here the shortcut does work, as there are four variables, but only two equations. Therefore, here we have an infinite number of solutions, without doing any work.